I'm going to briefly discuss degenerate perturbation theory. Um, I'm not going to go into full details, but I want to show you exactly how we approach the problem. So let's um, assume that we're starting with our standard unperturbed system. Um, and so we have H0 as being our Hamiltonian. Um, now we're going to define two states which share an energy. So I'm going to label these as um, L1, 0, um, and that's going to give us an energy E0 underscore L, and that's going to give us again L1 of 0. Um, and we're also going to have um, H0 acting on L2, 0, giving us um, the same energy, EL0, acting on L2, 0. So these are degenerate. Um, the eigenstates L1 and L2 are different. Um, they can be made orthogonal, trivially. Um, but we have a problem in that we can create arbitrary linear combinations. So we can write, um, let's say, chi is equal to CL1, um, L1, 0, plus CL2, L2, 0. Um, and then we, if we apply H0 onto chi, we will get EL0 multiplying chi for all values of um, C1, CL1, and CL2. Now, normally this isn't a problem. Um, if you want to, you can think about uh, an XY plane. Uh, it doesn't actually matter which way the x-axis points, so long as the y-axis is orthogonal to it. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We'll be rotating L1 and L2 around to create different states. When it comes to perturbation theory, however, it is important for two reasons. First of all, um, since the two states share an energy, the standard way of calculating the first order wave functions fails because it divides by the difference between the energies in the states. Um, so that's going to cause a problem. Um, and secondly, we need to know um, exactly which states we end up with after perturbing. So let's let's discuss that for a second. Um, so after we perturb the system, um, we find that actually the, the states split. So after perturbing, we find that EL1 does not equal EL2. Um, the states split. And once we've um, perturbed, we're going to find that we have a state psi. Actually, I'm going to change my notation here. I'm going to use the notation I used earlier, um, ignoring the psi itself and just putting an L1 and an L2. Um, so here's, I'm going to have that L1, that's the perturbed state, is not equal, and well, of course it's not equal to, to L2. It's never going to be equal to L2. Um, but L2 and L2, uh, and, um, L1 and L2 are no longer degenerate. Now, the reason this is a problem um, is because we are writing um, L1 is equal to some starting state. Um, we'll call that chi L1 of 0. Um, and then, of course, we add to it the standard corrections. We'll have L1, 1 plus L1, 2. Um, and we really should have a lambda in here. Um, and we should have a lambda squared in there, plus dot, dot, dot. Um, and the same with L2. So we would have that L2 is going to equal chi L2 of 0 um, plus, and I'll put the lambdas in properly this time, lambda L2 of 1, um, let's make that a proper bracket, um, there we go, proper ket there, and then we're going to have a plus lambda squared L2 of 2, um, plus dot dot dot. And the point is that as lambda tends to zero. In other words, as we remove the perturbation, um, we need to know the starting states. 
and there is only one set of starting states that are valid. So we need to know chi L1 of 0 um, and chi L2 of 0. Um, so that's essentially what the general perturbation theory does, is it works out what the appropriate linear combinations are. So what we do is we write um, chi L1 of 0 is equal to C11 of L1 of 0 plus C12 of L2 of 0. Um, and the same for chi L2. And once we've done that, um, so let's just actually write that out explicitly. So chi L2 of 0 um, is equal to C21 L1 of 0 plus C22 L2 of 0. So we're making these um, linear combinations. We're assuming that we know what they are, and those are going to be the states that the system reverts to when we remove the perturbation. Um, now, if you think about the, the first order perturbation theory, which I'll write as FOPT equation, um, then what you would see at this stage would be um, h hat of 0 minus el 0 acting on um, psi l mu 1, um, and mu just stands for 1 or 2, uh, and that's going to be equal to el mu 1 minus h prime um, acting on chi L mu of 0. Um, and in this case, we'll say mu is equal to 1 or 2, though of course all of these um, results can be extended to more than two degenerate levels. What I've done here is I've just rewritten the standard first order perturbation theory equation. Um, it's just a simple rearrangement. For the doubly degenerate case, which we're doing here, we can then derive um, a matrix equation. Um, which looks like this. It's h prime 1 1 minus e l mu of 1 um, h 1 2 prime h 2 1 prime and then h 2 2 prime minus e l mu of 1. Um, and then that acts on um, a vector where A is going to be either C11 or C21, B is going to be C12 or C22, and that must equal zero. Um, you can derive that by substituting into that first order perturbation theory and contracting with the L1 and L2, um, and we define H prime AB. Oh, that's actually AB is a bad choice. Um, let's say H prime, let's say NM is equal to. N, um, no, it's equal to LN, LM. Um, notation can get a little bit confusing here. So these are matrix elements between the starting states that we, we originally calculated. This is LN, H prime, um, LM. Uh, these are both zeroth order terms, um, and N and M are equal to one or two. Um, so what we're doing is we're making matrix elements between the original states L1 and L2, um, or if you go beyond doubly degenerate, larger ones. We then give, find an equation, a matrix equation. Um, we solve this matrix equation um, for E L mu um, of 1, and for the doubly degenerate case, there are two solutions because it's a quadratic. Um, and then we substitute in and solve for C11, C12, and solve for C11, C12, C21, and C22. So let's just recap. Um, the approach that we're taking in degenerate perturbation theory is slightly different to the standard approach. Um, we realize that we can make arbitrary linear combinations of the degenerate states, um, and we need to seek the correct linear combination to give us the starting 
states, the correct unperturbed states. Um, we do that by defining these parameters chi L1 um, and chi L2 in terms of the original states, however we've solved those, um, multiplied by appropriate parameters. Um, I've then indicated briefly how you might find the equation, but the equation form is down here. It's H11 minus EL mu, H12, H21, H22 minus EL mu. That gives you two solutions for the energies, which then allows you to find the appropriate linear combinations. Um, you don't need to know much more about degenerate perturbation theory at the moment. Um, it's just an important area, an important topic to be aware of and to understand how it works.